Hey, I'm Ben from Cash Pro Australia on the Skater Skull Sessions. Lawn Care Skull Sessions. It's been like a couple of weeks since I've done this <laughs> it's, intro. It's been fucked, bro. But I do have my co-host, BJ from TBL Property Maintenance with me. Good day, fine, sir. Um, I was actually wondering, can you turn the volume up in my, in my headset? Turn it up in your headset. That Very better? unprofessional. Is that better? Nah, uh, yeah, it is. Can we wiggle this fucker a bit? Oh, God. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah. Holy moly, turn it down. Turn that shit down. Um, how are we doing, everyone? Hopefully, everyone is doing good. And I can't speak for the whole country, but this Brisbane weather is so dreamy right now. <laughs> it is fine as fuck. The, hu- um, the humidity is kind of... You're wearing a sweater. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite there yet. But I mean, I've got I'm a bit more fucking I've got bulk socks on me. On too. I got boots on, so um, I guess I got socks on too. Yeah, but I mean, you're always wearing a sweater. Mm, yeah, <laughs> just a natural sweater. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I'm hoping that contractors are embracing this beautiful weather. I'm just playing fucking catch up. <laughs> it's funny, man. It's um, it's been a wild season. I'm happy that it's sort of calming down a bit, but I haven't really seen a. A stunting growth. Yeah, the growth is still gnarly. I do think um, I actually just – so for since Christmas, I've been mowing my own lawn. You know, that's all I can really yeah. talk about these days because I only like, really mow my paddock um, and my own lawn. Um, but I've been mowing it roughly about one and a half inches higher than what I usually do. Damn. And it's making me sick. <laughs> um, it's just that it's just too much. Yeah. Like, I just don't have the time to really take any more off. Yeah. Um, and it's it's actually worked in reverse for me. Like, I've been mowing roughly twice a week. Um, and because I'm cutting it so much higher, actually, when I get back, it was it's actually worse than what it was before I cut it. Yeah. Um, because I'm just not taking off enough enough grass. Yeah. So um, I found that at the footy fields. Like they, I was there yesterday and um, they're talking about doing some drainage works, which is good because there's some fucking wet patches. Um, but, yeah, the, the grass, like it was cut a week ago and it's longer now than it was a week ago. So, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. It's good. Like, it, like, like I said in the last one, which was fucking weeks ago, that – was the, it two weeks ago? I think it was a fortnight ago, yeah. So, um, yeah, it should just push the season a little bit further, which is good. Keep everything green for a little while longer. But um, I think that's the, where that's where we're going to get lucky. I do think with this cool – like, we're still having hot days. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I – even yesterday at, like, whatever time. I mean, it was, like, 28 or 29 yeah. degrees. And I was swimming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I haven't been in my pool. <laughs> like, mm. fucking my um, my daughter had a friend over and they went for a swim, and I uh, heard this dad. And uh, yeah, we had our first fucking snake at our house, mm. and it was um just behind the wall of the pool, and it was like a six foot greeny. But I don't know what some I don't know. There's chickens on the back fence, and there's chickens next door, and I reckon this fucking snake got stomped, eh? Because mm. it came like it was still alive. And I picked it up and it was just fucked. It was just like, oi, just put me down, eh? Mm. But I went and let him go. I took him. I walked across the road in bare feet across fucking four lanes and, um, yeah, got him to the other side and put him put him in the bush and he was just like so slow. Yeah. So I felt kind of bad. So hopefully he's all right. Mm. Doing what well. you can yeah, for fuck. the wildlife. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just pick everything up. I found a bird yesterday. Did you? Did you pick it up? Yeah, like... Did Humphrey just, try and fucking snack on it? I just have a feeling that, like, he wasn't physically injured, but I don't know. I'm thinking maybe this bird was just really scared, and I'm thinking maybe one of the dogs kind of rushed it initially. You reckon he fucking window whacked? It was just a pigeon. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, But, yeah, like, I, I just, like, I went over to Nelly, and I was like, hey, Nelly, and she's like, What's that? <laughs> and then she made a fucking home for it and everything. Oh, that's and then nice. Vicky went fucking skits and was like, get the fucking <laughs> thing out of my house. Get that fucking rat with wings out. Um, <laughs> anyway, I around at the farm where the girls were, where I just took it around there and they put it in the guinea pig cage. Nice. Um, oh, well. So, yeah. I, um, I fucking I went out and um, 
Yeah, I know. Dogs are just oh fucking Oh, my around. God. Oh, no. <laughs> they just moved the whole camera. You guys. Um, Keep yelling. Let's just fucking Yeah, well, we'll just keep rolling. Sorry, me dogs have come in. They've become very precious this summer because it had been so hot. We've been letting the dogs inside with the air con. Well, they're... Oh, don't even start, ground. We'll fuck. give them one chance. Hey, fuck. <laughs> He's just fucking nibbling you, mate. Just, just calm down, eh? Um, I also wanted to say um, I had a bloke reach out to me. I won't mention his name, um, but he, he reached out to me and asked if I was okay because on our last podcast... Yeah, you know, I guess it kind of went on a bit of a rant, <laughs> and he 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 said, you know, you sound flat, mate. You sound, you know, you're all right with everything. Is everything going okay? And anyway, it was um, it was really you know good and refreshing to see someone from the industry reach out. Um, you know, everything is okay, by the way. Really appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to know that there's that there's people out there that. That care? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that care. Fuck yeah. There is, there is. But, um, you know, obviously I've had had a lot of people rally around me at times of need. So, Absolutely. yeah, it's, um, it is a caring community. And I think that's um, another reason why, like, I, I've sort of endeavoured with the event side of things because I think, like, it is a community and what better way than to fucking get together and have a laugh and check out some fucking cool machines. Yeah. Um, See, when I first started Catch Pro, I was always, because I still had a mowing business and I just didn't know how it was going to go. I don't know, maybe it was my security blanket, but I was kind of yeah. like, you know, just want to help people and help the industry and rah, rah, rah. And I'm, I'm definitely past that now. Like, I'm all about the money now. Um, and it doesn't oh, mean man. that I'm doing anything dishonest um, or running my business in any other way. It's just that... Like, and I do like helping people. Yeah. But for me, it's all about the money. Mm, Well, I mean, Um, at the end of the day, that's what business is about. If your business isn't making money, unless you're in a lifestyle sort of business and you're just there to cut enough to pay the bills and all that sort of stuff, then, yeah, I guess. Yeah. My bills are rising. Fucking my microphone. My fucking headphones are a bit kooky as well. Oh, there we go. Well, the troublemaker dog walked out, so. Oh, that's the trouble one, is it? He's probably going to fucking bring another palm frond into my fucking house. Hey, <laughs> He's going to bring a fucking half chewed chicken in. <laughs> nah, they didn't come in, no, Mel. Uh, it's pretty wild, man. I fucking. There's been animals popping up everywhere. We've had green tree frogs at our house, which is. We've lived there for, you know. Going on two and a half years now, never seen them before. Now they're we've seen like three or four. Bro, we get the gnarliest frogs here, and when it and the toily, nah, they, no toily frogs. They fucking like must hop up the stairs, dude. But when it like fully rains and then we flood, we actually have to like shut every door and window because the sounds that they make, like you can't even watch TV. It's just it's gnarly as. It's kind of, um, but it's really cool. Yeah, I was gonna say it'd be kind of cool. But we get big fuckers too, man. Like, fucking yeah, like staunch green tree frogs, yeah. like just fucking bird. But yeah, yeah, we were at, we went to the circus. We took the kids to the circus the other night, and we're sitting there, and it's kind of you know tent and all that sort of shit. We're just watching shit running around because there's been so much rain. They're probably all the animals are inside looking for somewhere warm. Fuck me, Dad. There was like big ass spiders running across the across the mat where there's like chicks rolling around in fucking. You know, little outfits and shit doing acrobatics. And then there's a fucking frog sitting on my chair when I got back from getting the kids a slurpee. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So it was, yeah, it was weird, man. There's animals popping up everywhere. But Na- the, nature is cool. Yeah, nature is cool. I, yeah, like I said, I try to pick everything up, but Speaking probably should. Speaking of nature, what's wrong? What, um, what's up with the plover, dude? What plover? Oh, that motherfucker. The he snipped the fucking plover nest. That's fucked up. That's pretty fucking wild, man. And um, he like he like diverted. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna take this fucking gun out. Yeah, and then he gave it a fucking rear neck and choke. <laughs> um, it's not a laughing matter. It's I, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I first re- like, I didn't. I I don't like watching bad things happen to animals. No, nah, me neither. And like, I'm a real pussy when it comes to that. Um, and. Like, I saw the snip and I was like, uh, and I kind of, I scrolled away from it. 
And then when I was reading the comments, I was like, oh, there must be more to this. Mm. And then I seen the little stomp and then the little neck break and ditch. And I was just like. Oh, what? I didn't even see that. Yeah, he like snipped it. Then he went and put his foot on it and oh, then broke I thought he neck. just snipped it. I was like, I thought it was a nest. I didn't know it was a baby plover. No, it was. A I pl- just it wasn't a baby plover. It was the mum. Oh, I just bailed out of it straight away. What the fuck? Yeah, it was really bad. Really, yeah, graphic. I can't. I can't watch that shit either. That's um, obviously. I fucking. I saw the. I thought thought it was just a nest, and he just snipped the nest. No, obviously my eyesight is fucked, and I'm. Yeah, yeah. nah, it was it was really disgusting. Um, I don't That's know what's what. gonna happen to him, but oh, he's gonna get um, fucked. I yeah. mean, he's obviously like he's basically left his contact details with the owner of that house, so they're going to fucking pass that on. I mean, I look, I in a sense, I feel sorry. Like his business is just basically like he's had to remove his website, his yeah. no social media, things like that. I'm sure. Look, business will probably go on for him, but at the end of the day, if you're capable of doing that to an animal, what are you capable of doing to a human? Yeah, like it's fucked up though. Like. Because that's the first sign of psychos when they fuck up animals. Mm. You know, like yeah, all them serial killers, they all have a... They all start with animals. Yeah, they all have like a, a you know, usually like when they're kids and that. Yeah. That's fucked. It's wild. Um, anyway, moving on to... Well, I was going to say moving on to something happier, but it's not really that much happier, our topic today. Nah. But we are going to try and remix it and have a little bit of fun with it. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about... Working um, through sicknesses yep. and injuries. And we both know about them. And different incidents. <laughs> and, um, you know, BJ and I both have a, a really long history of working through some tough shit. Maybe we can touch on some mental shit too. Yep. Oh, it's not one of my favorite topics, but yep. I know that um, it, it's a part of almost everybody's life, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Everyone in the industry always focuses so much on knowing your numbers and being, you know, super organized and stuff, which we are also advocates for. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome to know your numbers. But at the end of the day, you just got to be a tough bastard when you're self-employed, don't you? Yeah, it's pretty fucked. It's a, like it's a really heavy duty. You right? No, nah, it's, a, it's a heavy duty industry to work in day in and day out. Um, and look, there's not much reprieve. Like we get winter, but if you, if you're in it for the long haul and you want to grow, then winter can be just as tough as, as summer. Like we go from mowing to mulching and you know, there's a, (laughs) it's a lot of fucking work putting down 200 cubes and mulch a, a winter. So yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's one of these industries that, you know, probably people are like, Oh, that that's tough. But they don't know how fucking tough it gets. Yeah, I mean, there's some really tough industries out there. Like I know um, in the Brisbane heat, just when it's so intensely hot and I just think about like other industries. And, Roof, and, and roofers? Yeah, roofers. You know, they what about got, they sparkies got, that are fucking in the crawl spaces? Yeah, putting but light. see, you know what? Like I I know that's bad. I know it's hot. Yeah. Um, but... And it is one thing, like when your insides are burning and when it, and when everything's so hot. But when you're outside and your fucking skin is literally burning, <laughs> like you know, it's you know, and then you got flies and grass and you know, fucking spiders, oh, fucking fuck. you know, sturge bukkakes. When you look down at, at your deck and there's just fucking spiders having a having a fucking dance party, just like yeah, we're coming to get ya. <laughs> but but what spurred on this topic for me was I was talking to my cousin and craggles. Uh, no, I won't, oh. won't mention it, but um, he's he's actually like a radio therapist or something. Oh, like, okay. You know, works yeah, yeah. Ra- it works in radiology. Yeah. Whatever it is, I probably cooked that. But he's talking about when he got his wisdom teeth out. Ugh. And it reminded me of a story when I got my wisdom teeth out, um, what happened was I had him I had my wisdom teeth probably prairie dogging for like five <laughs> years, man. You know, like they'd come up, just they'd teasing. Go down, you know. And I remember if anyone has had wisdom teeth issues, um the I remember like 
it, they must have been just coming through the skin. And someone made me laugh and I opened up my mouth to laugh oh. and it just split it. Oh. But what actually happened was I had a really bad tooth next to it. Yeah. And it just fucking exploded it. Ugh. And I had like maybe an exposed nerve or something. And it, it kind of, I went to sleep and then I woke up in the middle of the night and I could just not relieve this pain. And I had a bunch of pain relief, which made me sick. Yeah. It wasn't working. The only thing I could do was put ice on it. And it was the middle of the night. Yeah. And anyway, at about 4.30 in the morning, I ended up saying to Vic, I was like, Vic, I need help. Like, you need to take me somewhere. I just cannot. I ate every single ice block in the house. <laughs> I had to make extra ice cubes. Anyway, I got my wisdom teeth out and I wasn't that sore. But literally um, that afternoon at 4.30, I was mowing again. Yeah. <laughs> and... um my cousin was telling me a story like, you know, he got his wisdom teeth out. He had five days off work. He was up on the couch, you know, chilling out, playing Sony and that. And I'm thinking yeah. like, man, being self-employed is just a different animal. <laughs> it's so crazy, man. I, I'm similar to story, man. I, <laughs> so I got one, I had one wisdom teeth pulled out. They said, ah, it'd be nothing. It'd be sweet as. Fucking air and a half in the chair. This dude's like chiseling at my mouth. Just fuck me up. Like. Traumatized me. I, the chick, it was her first day, like the, the chick who was the, like helping. And uh, what are they, orthodont, like a nurse? And she was like, I, I, yeah, extremely. And she was like, I've never seen anything like that before. And I'm like, he had his fucking foot up on my leg, like trying to leverage my tooth out. And she's like, I saw that. I was like, just, it was crazy. Anyway. It fucked up. There's something wrong with me where I can't, I don't clot properly for some reason in my mouth. And um, I always get something called dry socket. And it's basically like the bone and the nerve is exposed. Yeah. It's, so it's fucked. They said to me, no smoking for yeah. whatever because it can cause that. Yeah. No sucking dick, nothing. <laughs> I lasted like a couple of hours and I was like, oh, let's just do it. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what fucks it. So. Um, Actually, you know what else happened to me that day that I had mine out? Wow. Um, Nelly must have been tiny and we went for a swim next door. This is when we didn't have a pool. Yep. And oh, yeah. And she was actually that. started drowning oh, and I had to jump in and get her. Yeah. Um, and that was when I was having me first lung buster after it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to chill out after you get it out, and but yeah, obviously like you know, self employed can't do that. But anyway, mine was all fucked up. Then I had to go back to work the next day. Just fucking the pain would not go away, and I went back and found that it was opened up. There's no nothing blocking the nerve and the bone, and it just it's the worst pain. It's like supposed it's, to be really painful. There's nothing there's nothing you can do except for because I have it all the time. Like I've had two teeth, three teeth, sorry, out. <laughs> I packed gum into it because you just have to cut this, the oxygen off. From That's the right. Nerve. Yeah. So yeah. I packed gum into it and um, I went in and they were like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, <laughs> it's my, it's my gum. <laughs> anyway, I got it, got it fixed. And then, you know, the stuff that they pack in came out while I was working and I was just like, fuck. So I was working, doing a village and I just had to walk across the road into a dentist, and I was like, you got to help me. And this lady was straight up like, oh, um, yeah, we can get you in in 15 minutes. So I fucking walked in, laid on the table. She's like, do you want needles? I'm like, nah, just get in there. She fucking was pulling chunks of bone out of my jaw and was like throwing them in this metal thing. I could hear them. I was just like, ah, gah, 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 gah. Yeah, shit. And then packed it, walked across the road, straight back to work. I was like, fuck, you know, if that happened in a – job that I was getting paid, I could have just been like, oh, no, i got to go home, eh? And what, um, what other injuries have you ever worked through? Like, oh, I've got an extensive list. Fucking a grade three calf tear that I got playing basketball oh, with that, you. Yeah. That was, the, that was um, maybe like year two or three of my business. Yep. And, um, yeah, I fucked up big time and I got a calf tear and it bruised from the sole of my foot up to my groin. And... Um, yeah, I was supposed to have like two weeks off and I went back on day three or something and just fucking that was when I didn't I didn't even have a self propelled. I had a push mower. I was just fucking limping through and yeah. It was Actually fucked. that reminds me, um 
when one night at basketball I had my shoulder ripped out mm. and my arm was fucking on me back. Dangleberries. And um, I actually, it was a Thursday night, I had the Friday off, but the following week was our first ever time at the village. Oh, okay. And we didn't, we, we didn't, we didn't start the garden contracts. We just started with the mowing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's and right. guys, and girls, um, I can't stress to you how bad it was starting a mower <laughs> or anything. <laughs> and like, I, so like I'm right-handed, and I'm sitting there thinking like I'll oh, just start it with me left. Yeah. And it's really gumby to do it. It is. Like. Like trying to put your foot on and like you're trying to figure out which one's your dominant foot, which yeah, foot you should put like on to just, pull it. Everything yeah. was just like, you know, um, mowing itself wasn't actually that bad. Yeah. But it's just those little things. But again, you didn't use self propellers Everything was pushed. Like Nothing was battery. Yeah. Like back then. Fuck. Um, so, yeah, that was that was like a really, really hectic one that I worked through. Um, but it's funny, like I, you know, have been reminiscent and thinking about, you know, the things I've worked through and the injuries and stuff. And it's weird, like, any time that I was either sick or really injured, it's like I just couldn't, like, like I had to say to myself, no, I'm going to work. Yeah. But if I had had, like, on the flip side, if we had had, like, um, you know, a specific rain day where it was, you know, maybe – at 11 o'clock, it was just, you know, like I would yeah, be completely yeah. content with going home or, you know, like just maybe even certain repairs that would hold you down. Like yeah. I would be like, oh, look, I'll just have to make this up. Right, right. But yeah. I don't know why. It's just something in my brain. Like when I'm when I'm injured or hurt, it's like, no, I can still do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm 100% um, the same. And it's it's dumb, but it like it doesn't, it doesn't compute not to get shit done because it only – I don't know. It just makes everything worse. Like you're like, oh, I'm finally recovering from my injury uh, or sickness and now I've got this fucking list that I have to take care of that's a mile long. Um, yes, I do. Like if I'm injured, I do go slower and I try to minimise oh, the amount that I fuck myself up. But at the end of the day, like if you're not earning like – yeah, yeah, you I were mean, saying you, you always, know your numbers, you but if you've got no up. numbers. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I and even to, to touch on the mental aspect of it, I know a lot of people have issues, you know, if they've got something going on and there's mental health issues, they have a lot of issues, you know, getting up and getting started for the day. Like a motivational. Yeah, yeah. like, and then, you know, things become overwhelming and it's like, I don't know where to start. And so, you know what, I'm just not going to start. I'm just going to yeah. stay at home. You know? and, and there's, you know, I don't, I can't touch on that too much, but I'm kind of like the opposite where if I didn't get up and start somewhere or yeah. doing something, then I'm just beside myself in another way. Yeah. You know, so I even do it here still. Like I, um, yeah, I might get the shits of being in the garage. I might've packed all the orders and, you know, instead of working ahead and building catches or, or whatever it is, you know, making bump feed heads and stuff until three o'clock, I, you know, I might fucking go and clean my pool or just, you know, get some rays or just whatever. Yeah, yeah, just do and something. And then, you know, like at like four o'clock, I start feeling like, oh, I should have fucking, you know, and then like <laughs> I, I'll go and do it. So I'm a little bit in reverse um, in that mental aspect of it. I, I tell you what, I... I see it as a positive mm. because I can't actually, you know, just fucking whip myself into gear. Yeah, yeah. Um, Self motivation is one of the hardest things to to kind of conquer when when you're starting off. Like maybe the first two years, like I was not a good self starter, and I think that that's you know I was a little bit behind the eight ball in is like it it was just like I was used to a routine. I was used to night shift. I was used to the same fucking shit. 11 years and then I had this whole new thing where I was in charge like I had to make the decisions I had to do the start times I had to fucking get up and just go and anything that I didn't organize was on me so I didn't have anyone to blame but myself so 
So and look, I do. Yeah. I I find it's a, it's actually more difficult to get motivated when you're not under the pump. Yeah, you know, like if you Fuck yeah. if you had four jobs on for the day, like just say four, yeah. four normal, you know, six hundred square meter push mows or whatever. You know, it's like, well, you don't really need to wake up at six o'clock. Yeah, you know? you like can probably start at eight and finish at two. Yeah. You know, it's like, like oh, I can get up. <laughs> Everyone can leave and fucking yeah. watch yeah, a fucking have a movie. Little, have a little wank. <laughs> yeah. Or, or three. Yeah. Try and uh, break a record. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's 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 a demotivator. You know, but if you look at your list and you got 14 lawns. Yeah. It's sort of a bit easier to. Yep. Be like, okay, you know what? I need to be up at this time and I need to structure this. I always just see it as a challenge. Yeah. Um, so. The worst thing about all these injuries and sicknesses and shit like this is you cannot apply the same rules to your staff as you're applying to yourself because it just, that's not how it works. I have I'm glad you brought this up. Because like I feel I'm like a real fucking hard ass. Well see, I've got up. a really good team. Like fucking Will broke his nose playing union. Big fucking yeah. whoop. He had one day off. Yeah, big whoop. What are you gonna do? He's, Sit at home and be like <laughs> He was he was like, no, no, I gotta work, I gotta work and and came like Dion was sick a couple of weeks ago and I felt like I'd fucking let him down because I was sick previously. And I had to spend a day in bed and I was like, fucking this guy's just coming to work. Like, I don't know if he had the same shit as me, but yeah, I had influenza A and I was fucked. Like, I'm, I, I'm a lot more sympathetic to sicknesses, but who was it the other day? Someone put up a thread about um, one of their workers. Oh, shit. One of their workers, you know, he texted him after hours and he's like, no, nah, what the fuck, you know, don't text me. Um, oh, yeah. Was that a, a guy that is a landscaper? Not sure, but... Or his um, leading hand or something? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of the story was that he he texted him on the weekend and the employee cracked the shits oh. and said, employee rights don't fucking contact me during non-business hours. Isn't that And fucked? that would have been, for me, that would have been instantly fired. Yeah. Like, I ain't taking shit... You know, and I don't care, like, people say, like, oh, employee rights and all of these things. Um, as a business owner, we should still have rights. Um, and- oh, yeah, they're going, like, they're all going out the window. Like, yeah. Like, I, I'm I'm fucking all for employees. I, I love the guys that I work with and, and I hope that they love working for me. But um, at the end of the day, like if I'm sending them a message, it's kind of a courtesy message. It's not to say, Hey, you have to do this at this time. It's like, Hey man, just want to let you know that next week we're going to be doing this or blah, blah, blah. Like I like to be prepared myself. So I, I kind of try and give them the same courtesy, but to yeah, be like, I mean, to be, for someone to be like, Hey, don't, don't well, I'll be like, well, <laughs> give me back my fucking car. Yeah, I mean, it, it, look, admittedly, I had never come across this situation. Like, yeah. I've always worked in a situation where my employees had not, you know, not always friends, friends, but there was a certain level of respect. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like I would be contacting them at, you know, nine o'clock at night, although I, quite often Rusty and I, that was basically the time that we could converse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if an That's employee about what time says that, finishing. yeah, <laughs> if an employee, you know, kind of goes along with all of that dribble, you, you just know that there's going to be roadblocks in the future. Yeah. And you really also know that in a small business environment, you need to have employees that are really going to move the needle for you. Yeah. You can't have some entitled piece of shit who is just not, gonna gonna bend around yeah some of these you know rules and there's always two sides to every story like there is ex- two sides I, I don't excessive know. He, he, excessive contact is just as bad as like no contact mm. like you don't want to be fucking hassled while you're at home and just getting absolutely bombed when you're trying to you know swing a leg over your missus or something you know when your fucking boss's name popping up like hey fucking how you going but yeah, it's um, you know, it's I mean, a bit I'm, rough to I'm be kinda, like, hey, don't contact me outside work hours. You know, like I'm kind of the same, even with Catch Pro. Like I, I don't work with any employees, but I work with so many suppliers. Yep. And like I, the ones that, like I, I do a lot of emailing at night, and I don't expect 
responses and stuff. Yeah. The ones that do respond to me after hours, these are not business owners, by the way. They're just employees yeah. of that particular business. But yeah, if someone from the factory where we get our parts pressed, if they respond to me at eight o'clock at night, I love them forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then- It means um, that they, they actually are dedicated to service and service is fucking so high on the priority list when you're a, when you're a business owner. If someone is, you know, going above and beyond, like I lick the balls. Mm. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'll so even good. lift up the shaft while I Yeah, for sure. <laughs> fucking service. I'll service you. <laughs> no, it's huge. Like it makes my, my heart sing when one of the boys has gone above and beyond. And they don't even have to do anything extreme. It's just like, fuck, that's why – you're with me, like, I want to make sure that that's the kind of team that I have. But, um, yeah. But, but even with, like, employee injuries, um, yeah, like I said, I'm probably a little bit more sympathetic to, sickness. to actual sicknesses um, just because, you know, usually the injuries are self-inflicted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's some sort of recreational activity or they're pissed or they're doing something. It is. Um, and, yeah, sometimes I have in the past have been like, well, I mean, you know, you made that choice and, you know, if it, if it was me and I did that to myself, I'd be here. Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. And I kind of, you know, um, I mean, if you <clears> – <throat> If you sprain your ankle, for example, like I had someone once say, like, oh, I've sprained my ankle, I need three days off. And I was like. <laughs> I just had a dude have a week off with a sprained ankle. Yeah, see what I'd be. But I'd, he fell down some stairs. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be on an ankle sprain. I'd be, I'd say, mate, you got a day or two. Yeah. Like realistically. Like, but you know what? He went and got a doctor certificate and all that shit and then. Oh, yeah. Like if it came. Yeah. See, the thing that's is. That's the thing. Like you got to play by the rules. He got a doctor certificate. Yeah, yeah. And I, doctor and, certificate. Oh, and the, I was like, yep. Sweet. Then I would understand that. Yeah. But I would probably still even say to that person, you know, oh, look, okay. Got your doctor certificate. You can have the time off, whatever. But. Yeah. Well, he know, wanted to come back. Be, and I'd say, like, if you want to be a part of the team, maybe we could suss out some light duties or, yeah. you know. Well, see, my, that's the problem with, with some of the work we do is, like, what the fuck is a light duty? Like, really? You're going to get a fucking a broom and just sweep around a job while everyone else does the work? But it's an ankle sprain, like. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, know. Come the fuck on. But like. he, um, he, in his defence, he he wanted to come back, but I said you can't come back without a clearance, and his doctor wouldn't give him one until the week was up. Yeah. So it is what it is, and I fully accept that. Um, but yeah, it is one of those things. Like, if you don't play by the rules, you you gotta get fucked up. Like, really, people can fuck you up pretty bad. But see, that's the thing with these pussies. Well, that that's the they thing. They don't follow through. That's going to be Nothing a law. Nothing is going to happen. That's coming in as a law, that bullshit where you can't contact, we can't even fucking send them a message or anything. I can understand in big, like, massive companies where there are procedures and shit, but we're like mum and dad fucking businesses. Like, we, we, we're fucking running on the fly most of the time. Like, we're just, like, hitting as many goals as we can every single day. And Maybe if we have I'm, to send an after hours message, I don't think that's the end of the world. Just because you received it doesn't mean you have to fucking open or reply to it. That's that's true. So, I like that. But you know what? Like maybe I'm just completely out of line. But like when we were getting our pool built, our pool builder literally at four o'clock just all he'd turn off his phone. No communicate. You could really? not contact him after four o'clock. Now I I understood it for a certain thing, but then, you know, you send him a message at seven o'clock when that turn f- that phone turns on, I expect a reply at, at least at some yeah. point. And I think that's what the big issue is with these fucking people who turn their phones off. Later on, when they finally, when it is time, that's your work time then. Yeah. That's the delegated time to get back to. They don't do it. Yeah. They just, oh, you know, I got that yesterday. Whereas... Yeah, and it's the same thing I've talked about it with me. Some people will inquire about a catch pro or whatever, and it'll be ten thirty at night. And sometimes I open it and think, like, I just it's a bit of a fiddly inquiry. I probably, you know, 
it's probably actually easy for me to do it right now. Yeah. And it's be, and it's because it takes two minutes of your time, um, whereas, you know, the next day at 7.30 in the morning when I look at everything, what, yeah. whatever else came in, like I just, you know. Um, the only defense I have, like, is this is your business and you do have to understand that you, you've got to kind of respect some boundaries. If you're constantly messaging people that work for you after hours, it's kind of like, well, you need to get shit together and either prioritize them a bit earlier. Because even like if I've if but, I've forgotten to, th- to put up the street list, but, I don't even. But why I don't it even have send to be it? constantly messaging them? That's what I'm saying. Like it, you know this this one particular dude got messaged during the day on a weekend. Yeah, see, that's fucking like get a real fucking problem. Yeah. You know what? At the same time, get a fucking different job. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. You just that. know that that person isn't going to be in it forever. Oh no, nah. they're never gonna. And as a leading hand as well, they're never really going with that type of attitude. They're never really going to take your business to the next level. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's unfortunate that that it kind of <laughs> it's going that way across the board. Like you, it, the employer has like fuck all rights these see, days. When I was a little bit younger employing people with sicknesses, I would always try and say to them, um, come and have a crack. Yeah. Um, And this would be like on the first day, like if they were, let's say they were a bit sniffly at work, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And they're like, you know, fuck, I think I'm getting sick or I'm not feeling well. Usually that that following day I'd be like, um, come and have a crack. You know, usually once you get to around 10, 10 or 11 o'clock, you know, when you have one of these sicknesses, usually being out in the fresh air, mm. you know, it does you a little bit of good and you can push through. It's yep. just that the morning time you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> you know, like I understand yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Now in my older age, um, and also this was kind of the case at Greenscapes, like if at toward the end of my time, if someone yeah. was sick, I'd be like, ah, oh, motherfucker, stay home. Like, I don't want that shit. Yeah. Because I was getting vulnerable to all of these yeah. things. And then like COVID popped up and I was like, you know, telling the boys like, hey, with, with Ellie, like we were really, we, oh, man, we thought COVID was going to be the fucking, yeah. the thing that we, mm. we had to worry about, but it wasn't at all. Um, but yeah, I was like, hey, boys, like if you are sick, you have to let me know. Yeah. And we have to find out what's going on ASAP. And I like, and I just said that like that wasn't even like m- me asking them as a as a boss. I was just asking them like as a as a as a human being. Yeah, like yeah. I'm just like, hey, yeah. I really have to be careful mm. with the podcasts and shit. I'm like, you okay? And fucking, mm. yeah, we'd work it out from there. But yeah, it's it's one of those things, man. It, it really, I don't think there's any perfect answer because everyone's different. There's Every- not a perfect answer, and I'm probably out of line and things. But at the end of the day, like I don't employ anyone anymore, so yeah. Um, and, and that's the reason for it. Yeah. Um, the thing is, too, I think sometimes, like as a business owner, I kind of forget. Like, take the ev- event for instance, like. As soon as I get home, I'm not even fucking going upstairs anymore unless I need to take a shit. I fucking walk in the back door, kick my boots off straight into the office and I start fucking on anything that's come through, talking to vendors, talking to fucking, you know, venues, um, just basically trying to – insurance is fucked, like, you know, trying to trying to get insurance sorted. We have to go through a broker, so you got to talk to the broker. And we changed accountants. We're fucking doing all this crazy shit, like in the background that I don't think anyone <laughs> and I didn't understand. Like last year was a fucking breeze compared to this year. So this this whole event thing is huge, and you know, it's just like it makes me forget about you know what time it is, and you know TBL. It's like TBL's been closed since I walked through this door, mm. and then at night when I'm like, all right, we've had enough. Fucking walk up at like nine thirty. Be like, fuck! I got to send the list for tomorrow. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. I'll send it in the morning because I'm up. Yeah. I'm up fucking early anyway, so I just fire the list off in the morning. But um, yeah, communication. Like everyone always says, communication is key. But then you know, for the Australian government to be like, hey, you got to cut out some of that communication. It's kind of like, hey, get fucked. Like, yeah, I mean, the fact that. These days, like a an SMS is so acceptable. Yeah, 
which it is. It's yeah. acceptable these days, you know? Like, you can you can send a text now. A text used to be kind of like one of those things that you just do. I mean, I guess I'm probably going back 10 years. Yeah. But, you know, whole businesses are run through text messages these days. Yeah. Um, and they have been for a long time, like, probably, you know, in the last at least five years yeah. or so. Um, but, you know, and it, and it's been one of those things that it's very convenient for even the recipient yeah. to just get a text. Hey, I'm coming tomorrow to mow, you know, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. it could be seven or eight o'clock. Yeah. If a client had said to me, I mean, I don't, I don't think that, it, that it's a really, a, a a scenario that would ever happen. It's not like a client would ever say, don't text me during business hours. Yeah. Um, Cause they'd be dropped immediately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, employees, it's kind of like, you know, grow a set of balls, mate. Gonna be like, like, I thought we were friends. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Cause I don't really employ people that I don't like gel with. Yeah. Yeah. I just and don't, see, that's, that just see, wouldn't see, work. See, there's also so many arguments there like, Oh, okay. That's discrimination. It's like if um, you're a cunt, then you're not going to fucking sit next to me for eight hours. Yeah. It's as easy as that. And you know what? It's my business. It's a whole fucking reason I'm dictating everything that happens in this business except for like obviously how much tax I pay. But, um, yeah, I just think that's that's a huge thing is is basically surrounding your people with – well, you're sa- surrounding yourself with like-minded people and, and it just reduces that, like this whole thing. Like they have the same – you know, mindset as you, then, you know, they, they're going to work when they probably, you know, could have justified a day off here and there. And I'll <laughs> tell you something um, that is kind of the reverse. Like I've employed a lot of people that have kind of been, you know, young go-getters. And yeah. I guess I've motivated them too much in certain ways where, they're always texting me, hey, what about if we do this? This will really move the needle. <laughs> rah, rah. And I love it. Well, I love look, it. I love it, but they almost always end up being more of a troublemaker. There's been one situation for me. Like I employed, um, <laughs> and you're going to know who I'm talking about. Is it the same person that I'm talking <laughs> about? Zombie? Yeah. Yeah, like I employed someone, you know, and, and let them know that I needed them to be my number one person, like a lead hand. Yep. Um, and that they were going to help me take the business to the next level and that there would be, you know, great opportunities, rah, rah, rah. And, mate, within a week or two, he's, like, fully telling me that he's going off to get his tree climbing licence, mm. bobcat, like, like, all of this shit that, like, just wasn't relative in my business. I got the same and I'm spiel from the same person. And I'm sitting thinking, like, uh, are we on the same page still because... You're writing in a different book at the moment. Like, yeah. This is not where we're going with this. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent work. I like very good quality of work. But when it came to that side of things, it's like he wanted to basically be the business owner. Yeah. So, like, I'll tell everyone here that <laughs> once I saw the whiteboard come out, whoa, in the shed. Um, you know, like okay. I, I respect the org- I respect all of the the positive sides of it, but but once the whiteboard came out, I knew it was never going to work. Yeah, because it's the same thing that we've been saying all the time. It's great to be organised. It's great to have a vision. It's great to have goals. All of this stuff, but I could just tell, like I was employing this dude to pick up a hedge trimmer and hedge trimmer for multiple, you know, hedge trim for multiple hours a day, do all these things. Once I saw all of this shit on the whiteboard, I knew that he wasn't cut out for it. Yeah. Like it. He was trying to take your business in the direction that he felt it should go in. Which is also fine. The, the, the end vision was, it, you know, but it's, it's baby steps. Mm. Like, you know, he, he could have ended up being that guy that yeah. was going to be sitting in the shed fucking riding with a pen all day. Yeah. But we had to put in like 12 to 24 months of solid hard work. Yep. Um, and I always just saw it that I was doing both. Yeah. I was doing that hardcore work stuff and I was brainstorming at night and yep. doing all the other things. And, you know, he's sitting in the shed. Yeah. Um, I love the enthusiasm. and love um, the enthusiasm. But, but it's just, yeah, not not cut out for my business. Yeah. And, it, like, this person had had a business previously and 
That failed, by the way. Yeah. So, and look, again, he was an amazing worker, very good quality. But, yeah, he, the the thing that let me down was he, he was supposed to be my leading hand and three weeks after he started, he got caught drunk, drink driving, fucking like seven times over the limit. So that just fucking threw a little spanner in the works. Speaking uh, of drink driving, um, one of my earliest – Memories of like working real fucked up was um, I know it's not like a real sickness, but I was <laughs> I was uh, as real as it gets, mate. I remember I fucking hurled on me Honda. Oh no! And I just the world was spinning. I wasn't drunk anymore, but I was like severely hungover. Um, and I just remember it being the worst day. Like, um. <laughs> you know, and, I got a good one too. And look, and I remember, I, I believe I was of age, but I was still working with my dad. Yeah, okay. And my dad doesn't drink at all. <laughs> so he's like, I don't, I can't relate to you. <laughs> no, so I just was trying to hide it the oh, whole time. Oh, just, fuck. You know, and I remember I fucking, I took a hurl in someone's backyard, got some on the mower. I was like, man, this is, this, this is fucked. Mm. Like, you know, um, I, th- I would probably suggest that. I would have more trouble working with a hangover than any other sickness. Really? Yeah, like. Do you remember Kyle's wedding? Yes. Do you remember how fucking blind I got, and I was whopping? No. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I was, I, um, I was pretty fucking. See, I haven't drunk in no I don't, ten years. I don't really so, drink that much. Like I've been, I've been drunk with. Unless that I'm on time, tour, <laughs> but I haven't really been hungover, so I don't really yeah understand no. it anymore. But so we finished that wedding at what? Like two o'clock in the morning, something, something like that. It was fucked. Yeah. And then, like, I got home. Remember, at it was about a secret three. wedding because of COVID. Yeah, like, yeah. We weren't allowed to dance. <laughs> and they closed and all the all curtains. Just, <laughs> we're all just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good, but yeah, I got blind there, and then I, we finished at like two, and then I had to go out and start work at um, Scrubby, mm. and I was fucked. Yeah, we're too old for that shit. Yeah, now. way too old. I had to get someone to come pick me up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> if I can leave your car at my house, you drive. This is fucking, we're fucking fuck. Um, another one that I experienced, now this is when I was a young lad. I, mate, I was probably 16. And it would have been my one of my, in fact, it was probably within my first couple of months of work. But um, my appendix basically almost exploded. Oh, that's when I first met you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the same thing. Like, I just I didn't want to – like, I could feel pain, but I just didn't want to disappoint. My, like, I, I was still working and stuff. Yeah. But it kind of just got to the point where, like, I couldn't stand up straight anymore. Did you think it was a shit? Like, a shit gone rogue? Nah, see, I don't start? have problems like that. Like, yeah, I, 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 I don't either. People talk just... about, like, gut pains and stuff, and I just – I don't get that. Like, no. Nah. Um, but I knew, I knew it was my appendix because what happened was it was, it was around Christmas time. And, uh, like, I was still young. So, you know, like, we, I I was still doing, like, the family thing with my actual parents and stuff. And um, I think a mate took me to the hospital on Christmas Eve. Fuck. And I just had, they just gave me pain relief and something else. And I was on the course of that for two or three weeks. And when we went back to work and the, the medication ran its course, it was literally like the next day I was in surgery. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and it was just, I remember my mum picked me up. Um, I feel really embarrassed talking about it, but I've got to remember I was only 16. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, I remember my mum picked me up and then it must've got a little bit worse. And yeah, next thing I knew I was <laughs> on the surgery table. Fuck. Um, so I didn't, that was sort of one of my. That was like your first early. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that that would be one of my first. I think yeah. my first. Um, so I was a bit of a bum. I used to like cook alcohol to make money and things like that. Well, and it's I've, better than meth, right? Yeah, it's better than meth. But um, my first job, I was working in a in a jail crew. So I was basically working with people that were, um, you know, Vegas. out of jail, and yeah, they were pretty pretty rough bunch like one dude fucking had murdered someone way back in the day like he was old as fuck but he was like this vietnamese dude was pretty crazy but yeah anyway we're there just um fixing up these chairs for a haul because it was just like a random job thing and it was paying fuck all but you know i was happy to be working 
Anyway, I'm sitting there with the chair upside down. I just got it sort of locked in between my legs and I'm there grinding all this rust off the bottom Mm. and all of a sudden I fucking hit the um, corner and this is the first time I've ever used a grinder and and it hit and grabbed onto my shorts and it just started chewing up my leg and it went all the way across my ball bag, nipped the tip and then like cruised across the other leg. So I'm there just fucking bleeding and just we were just like oh man there's all these tough jailbirds here just walking yeah off, just yeah walking off and the grinder <laughs> yeah yeah but i didn't i was like fucking hell <laughs> fucking help me anyway i'm fucking there and i'm like oh my god what do i do like my cock and balls are out in front of all these dudes i was like waiting for one of them to be like oh tasty but anyway i um i just started unwrapping my red undies like just dick jocks just fucking unwrapping them and, and I hadn't turned it off yet. So I was like, meh, fucking chewed back onto my leg and I was like, ah. Lucky it wasn't a cutting disc. It was just like a like a metal uh, wire brush bit. And, oh, uh, that would just grind my dick away. Yeah, yeah well, I mean. Just disintegrate it. Like I've still got scars and shit like a, a fucking cat attacked me. But um, You could have taken that opportunity to go get a proper circumcision. Yeah, no, nah, I like it. I like having that extra baggage. <laughs> <laughs> I can hide shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> but um like yeah. Smokey Joe, eh? Yes, yeah, exactly like Smokey Joe. Does anyone know what Smokey Joe is? <laughs> I don't think maybe. I could probably can you, you reckon you could you could post that on Instagram, eh? Maybe. I mean I've seen more mm. VJJ and titties I've and shit. I've seen inside someone on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the fucking what about the the pause challenge shit that's going on now on Instagram? Yeah. I should do one with my big sweaty asshole out or something. Oh, like, oh, check out this lawn flash, <laughs> and people would be like, wait, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. but um, yeah, fucking, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I um, I wanted to go back to work, but they wouldn't let me. Like, I I was like, I'm actually earning money for the first time. I'm not having to fucking have fifty people walk through my house and. I don't have to cook. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> I've I got to say, big company stuff. Yeah. You know, like, if I worked for, like, even in the same industry, but, like, if I worked for um, Green Options or yep. Skyline or something and, you know, I like, dislocated my shoulder, I would have a different attitude. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, no, I'm, I can take four days. Well, I had my car crash. But I'm talking small business environment. Yeah, I think it's completely where, different. Where I think it, you know, these employees just don't understand how important you are to them. And. Well, I think maybe they don't understand how important they are to me. I <laughs> Like. No, know. that's what I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah. how important, you know. But, and, like, I always drill it into every worker's head before they're ever employed. Um, I had someone once, I've said the story before, he's a younger kid, and, I mean, he acted really hardcore, but he came to work one day just weeping like a bitch, <laughs> like fucking crying. <laughs> and I'm like, I, te- I text Vicky and I was like, oh, look, what do I do in this situation? Like, he's Fucking, he's so he's openly weeping. Yeah, and he was crying about his girlfriend. Oh, and I'm like, and he 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 wanted to go home, and I was like, I was like, man, you're not gonna make it in this world, like, <laughs> you know, like he's supposed I think to I be. I remember that dude. Yeah, look, I, he was he was he was a great little worker. Yeah, um, he had a lot of attitude. Um, too many bongs. Was very ina- yeah. He was really inappropriate. He used to you know I, I brought it up before. He used to spit in front of and he used to call everyone the c word. Yeah, like oi, you know just oi, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean I just couldn't believe it. I was just like pull yourself together. <laughs> like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, um, I, I I just was blown away by it. Um, so you know it's kind of just. These situations, yeah, I mean, look, we have to, I just think these days, so many things, there's so many serious things happening in the world um, and so many serious things that happen throughout people's lives. Look, we're older and wiser now, yeah. right? Um, and I, I just think some of this other shit, like it just gets over-dramatised and mm. people, I'm just not sure. In that, saying that, like the older you get, the more, the more shit you have to deal with. Like the more, you know, your money is moving around your life and the more you have to work and the more you have to fucking push to 
you know, pay for your house and you go. And, like, obviously at this time, you know, things are getting really fucking tight. But, um, yeah, I, t- I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a hard topic actually because people fucking lie so much. Mm. People lie about being sick and, you know, being injured. It's like, oh, my back hurts. It's like, well, you know, that's why, like, I'm, I'm glad, like, if my guys are actually physically fucked, I'm like, hey, you have to go to the doctor. Like, you have to go and sh- get checked out because I need to know that you're not going to come back, fuck yourself up. Because we've already been done once with work cover and it cost us a fair amount of money mm. and it is a big setback when someone... But, you know, like I see that scenario too. Like I could see that you were just getting bent over and fucked from a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. And you knew it too. I fucking knew, I knew it. And I, I was think getting that's absolutely where, fucking rimmed. I think that's where I'm too stubborn and I would... Be challenging them. I, it happened to me well, once. We challenged. Remember. We couldn't do a fucking thing. Like this person injured themselves outside of work. It was a pre-existing condition, and they said that it, you know, doing the same job for you for fucking mm. years, and then all of a sudden they work for me and they get fucked up. Yeah. So it's like, well, and what, I was what suspected that situation was probably a mix of not not any mental health, but just needed a change. Mm. Just needed a life change. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and use my fucking and yeah. use my pocket to get it. Um, it's fucked, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but I mean, look, this episode wasn't really supposed to be about employees. No, you know, taking the pit. I mean, look, oh, yeah, I'm fucking like, hey, sweet. Just, I got the matter. We just free. We just but. free flow in whatever area. But do, have you had any other injuries, like in your lawn mowing career, pal? Uh. Yeah, look, there's definitely a lot of hand injuries, um, fucking like stings, like the facial stings. Like, oh my god, Will got fucking. He got. Wait, he had to have a few days off because he got fucked in the face by a bunch of wasps. I got stung by a wasp the other day and didn't even feel it. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind them now. I thought I come a little bit, we, but we, oh, we all know about you. No, but, no. But I, I got stung between the webbing of my fingers. Ooh, and I thought. Because I, I had some, like, longer dead grass that I yeah. poisoned. You know, the, and when it gets a bit longer, it's quite thick. Yeah. I thought that I just walked past something and it kind of stabbed me. Yeah. And I just felt a little bit of a... Well, but, ouchie. Yeah, it was a wasp. Was it up against a fence? Yes. Fuck me. Like, the 40 acres has this massive long fence now through the middle. And every three or four uh, runs of fence, there's a new wasp nest and they're getting bigger and bigger. I'm not going to kill them. Like, I don't care if they're there, whatever. But I went past them and I was a good fucking three or four foot away from them. They got the shits, eh? And they jumped off and tagged me all over the arm. And I'm like, oh, you fucking dickheads. But, um, yeah, it kind of brings me back to life. I don't know what it is. Oh, don't get like, me when wrong. I get stung, I it's like a big, it's like a rush. It's the, it's the anticipation of getting stung that is way worse. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I remember Russell... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bless him, mate. He he would actually work himself into a frenzy <laughs> about the thought of being stung. Oh, God. And he completely eluded it. I, it never happened. But I would always say to him, Russ, today is your day. <laughs> You're all going to get fucking stung today. You know those, like, real dry summers we had a couple of, of yeah. years ago? Yeah. Where you just... Even, even starting up a hedge trimmer at a hedge and you can just see these motherfuckers coming out. But, um, and like I'd get hit, you know, here and there and, and he was just always like, <laughs> you know, like he'd, he'd even have like a little belt with all, all the sprays and shit, Fuck. like, you know, being prepared, going to fucking war against these things. Yeah. But sometimes like, it's just like a luck of the draw. Like the only- But once you actually get stung- it's like, ah, fuck. Yeah. And then, you know, there's maybe like another bad 10 seconds. And yeah. then it's kind of just one of those things where it's like, eh. The only bad one I've had was at my mum's house and I moved a chair and it was like a cloth chair with a, a with a back. And she hadn't sat out there for so long that there was a really decent nest underneath the back of the chair. Mm. And as I moved it, they all just fucking bailed out and they tagged me on the face like really close to my eye. Yeah. And I had to spend the next two days walking around like fucking elephant man. But a- Anything on the face is actual serious. Yeah. Like it um, 
it fully affects the way that you can sleep and, you know, all of those things. It, yeah. It's it's actually not good. Yeah. Um, and I think, I believe I've only been tagged maybe on the lip once. Ooh. And I Kim had, Kardashian. I had, yeah, I had proper dick Yeah, lips. that's bad. Um, <laughs> but I do remember... <laughs> I do remember. I couldn't, a, couldn't imagine with big fuck off lips. It was just like one big bottom lip. Yeah. Um, Let me rest my balls on that. <laughs> I remember I had a young young guy by the name of Luke, and he was he was up high in in this palm, <laughs> and with a chainsaw. Yeah. Um, and all I remember here is this. Ah. ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, um, like, because I thought he was gonna like drop the saw. I was holding the ladder. For yeah. Him. Yeah. And when he ended up coming down, I was like, I was like giving him a round of applause. I was like, you know what, you did, you did great to to number one not fall <laughs> and to not drop the saw. Yeah, um, <laughs> he had been fucking tagged <laughs> everywhere, man. <laughs> um, I saw a video and the poor bastard. He had some tears. He wasn't crying. He had tears in his eyes, but oh, it does uh, hurt. Oh, it fucking hurts. Yeah, yeah. I um saw a video the other day of a guy. Um, I don't know if it's like durian or if he was like harvesting honey in the fucking Amazon or whatever, but he took his little smoke machine up. It's like just a fucking, like a stick platform with some fire on it. He's fucking gotten up there. He's gotten all the way up and the smoke's protecting him. (laughs) He's accidentally dropped it. He's like, oh, and then all of a sudden you just see the video and this fucking swarm of the, the biggest Amazon Amazonian fucking wasps or bees or something just start absolutely punching him. Hey, they're just and they cover the camera like he just gets swarmed. I was like, fuck, thank God we don't have that sort of shit here. So I may have told this bee story before. I've never been stung by a bee. So I worked at a place just locally in Wynnum and we were whipper snipping, we were doing a complete yard cleanup and I had uh, J Boy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, another another Esche tough ass. <laughs> He's the one who left me for a week to go and trim buds in fucking Timbin. <laughs> so yeah, I had J Boy with me, and um, I I just started snipping around the base of this humongous old school tree, and then <laughs> I just I felt things hitting me. Like I had the snipper going, I had you know head headphones on probably, and anyway, I kind of just looked up, and it was. It was like a bee cloud. Like, like a proper swarm. Yeah. Like, like in a cartoon. Yeah. And I kind of backed up and they were coming for me. And then <laughs> Jay kind of seen me just like, you know, doing karate out. chops in the air. <laughs> I had the snipper out. Backed up a little further. And then it got to the point where I was, I was probably 30 or 40 meters away. <laughs> and then I saw Jay sort of coming later on. Um, and you know, like they were all in my shirt. I wasn't really <laughs> oh, getting, no, I wasn't really getting stung. Yeah. I was just kind of being attacked. I had a couple of stings. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what's worse, a bee or a wasp? Bees, bees hurt. Really? Bees hurt, but they're not as aggressive. Yeah. Around a nest. I, um, I had a bee yesterday and I gave it some sugar water cause it flew into my house. I uh, felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, we, we ended up in the front yard. Yeah. Then we ended up halfway down the street <laughs> and <laughs> the lady come out. I had to text her and I was like, I can't come back. Yeah. And yeah, like they ended up calling a bee person to ha- and they had to exterminate the nest. Oh. But apparently like because the queen bee was, was in jeopardy, all these other little fucking foot soldier bees oh. – they wouldn't let me back in the property for real, man. Like I, I just, I was sitting there thinking like, no, I've got to finish this job. And I couldn't, we had to come back the next day. Oh, you just have to be more careful. <laughs> um, so fuck me. Eh? Anyway, that was my bee story. Oh. That, that these bees just, they just were going to protect the queen. Yeah. They were not going to let me. Yeah. But yeah, I've, so, I've never. Like, you'd be fucked if you were a dog. You know, because oh, a dog yeah. would be like, fuck you. This I is mean, a dog yard. could run way faster than me. Yeah, but what are you going to do if the dog can't come back? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like the other lady was standing there like, they, and she they was tag okay. you with, they take you with pheromones, don't they? And they're just like, oh, this guy's yeah, no good. Like fuck, get him. they put a him. GPS tracker on me and, the, and the, <laughs> like, this, you know, he can't come back. 
I've seen like a few videos of people getting swarmed by bees, like in regards to like they'll come out and their mailbox just looks like it's got a fucking beard and it's like, just bees just hanging off it. Like my girl with the mood ring. <laughs> Remember that old movie? No. Oh, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He got, tagged, he got tagged to his death. Yeah, I'll probably, uh, I, I know that I won't watch that movie because I'll probably get sad. <laughs> uh, I but, won't watch that movie just because I don't want to see Dan Aykroyd. I love Dan Aykroyd, dude. I <laughs> yeah, went, like people love him, but I just. I, I, I went to the fucking, I went to the movies and watched Ghostbusters. Oh, God. Yeah, fuck yeah, Ghostbusters. And then, and then after we watched the new one, came home and watched the first one. But we watched it with Chloe because she's. She's seen the um the two new ones with the fucking new people in it. Yeah, I um, saw the – is that the new Ghostbusters? Yeah, yeah, the it's new kind ones. Of funny. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of – yeah, that's why I watch them. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, man. The fucking bees and wasps, like, they don't really – they don't scare me. Better than spiders. Now, fuck spiders. Now, I've been bitten once really bad on the hand where it kind of ate away a chunk of my hand. Mm. Um, I also experienced this. Yeah, but I've had a few, like a lot of spider bites. But then, but then not... I passed the disease on to Russell. Yeah, that's and oh, fucking... that was like staff, wasn't it? Yeah, like Ugh. I it was like eating away at me, and I just did just you go to this... work? I was at work. Hey, fucking oath. I had to. I shit my pants. I had. I shit my hair. Shit my pants when I had my spider bite. But I thought like my <laughs> arm tattoo. Was gonna get like severely. Oh, we should just like fuck. It. That cost a lot. Um, and they give you a shot of penicillin. Mm. But Rusty was living with me at the time, and you know, obviously, he doesn't have people like you know Vicky or you know other people who are like, oh man, you should get that sorted. I was just stubborn, but he was just like, yeah. Anyway, his foot man was like the size of a fucking football, and it mm. turned black. Oh yeah. And I remember, yeah. John at the village was like, you should go home now. <laughs> um, so, and he did get sorted pretty quickly, but yeah, he, he persevered. <laughs> he persevered. <laughs> persevered until the boot wouldn't go on anymore. But and hey, he, that's real dedication, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then fucking- It yeah. might take you four hours to do that one hour job, but you know, you're doing with a full mm, foot. Yeah. I reckon, I don't know. I don't think I've had, I've had like, obviously, I think everyone has like- bad neck days where like they'll throw their neck out and be fucked for a while and same with back like i've had a few back injuries obviously you've had some fucking you know proper back injuries but i've had i've had a bunch of strains but i think if i was to lay around for me like the strains i think it doesn't help yeah me really i i can say with back and neck and i'm I'm a little bit more sympathetic to this as well. Only because I know, like, my back issues with me working, obviously they did get worse and worse and worse to the point where I basically ruined my physical health. Yeah. But any time that I ended up having to go home, it wasn't always because of the initial injury. It was because of the other things that spur from it. Like, one time... I can only assume that my body was so stressed out with my back injury. And yeah. I remember I was at the village um, and I was taking all this pain relief. And when you take pain relief, you know, you've got to drink all your fluids. And, you know, I was smoking a lot. And I, mate, I basically just ran myself into, like, just – a really bad physical state yeah. because I'd had so much pain relief. I was smoking so much. It was so hot. I, I think I did go and get a drip that day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I remember I had to leave. Vicky had to come pick me up. Yeah. That's fucked. And, um, it was a real fuck around cause my vehicle was there. The trailer was stuck there. I don't, I don't think Rusty had a license at the time. He couldn't get it back. It was just, it just was a real big fuck yeah, around. Yeah. It's just fucked. Um, and I still didn't learn my lesson. Yeah, see, because that's... I had I had big incidences after that. Yeah, and it's where I just you know felt the need, like I just had to keep pushing on. It's um, fucked when in your heart you've worked so hard for something, and then you're like, "Fuck, this little setback is gonna turn into a big setback," or you, you just don't know. I think realistically, with injuries, I think now I would take them a bit more seriously because I am fucking old and fat and. 
you know, yeah, look, just I, I don't recover as quickly as no, I used to. No, and look, serious injuries, yes, but, you know, like I'm saying, I'm talking about the dumb shit, like an ankle sprain. Yeah. Or a fucking, um, you know, a badly, you know, I had someone once, uh, he hurt his finger. And look, I, I, I assume that, like, it just wasn't genuine. You know, yeah. like, I, you know, he texted me at five o'clock in the morning, he said, I got a doctor's appointment um, about my finger. And <laughs> okay. I remember, like, we had Rusty and, and Zombie might have been with us at that mm. point, and we were laughing. Yeah. We, we said, when he gets here at 11 o'clock, we're going to give him the most fucked up work ever because he fucked our whole day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, I just, I'm just not sympathetic to that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think like, yeah, I think you're right. Like serious, serious injuries. Yes. Like I tried to go back to work straight away with, after my car crash, um, I got hit by a fucking drunk driver and I tried to go back a couple of days later and all the bruising hadn't even come out. Like I was getting like the bruising was across my chest from the impact, but then it just started to creep out and it was going up my neck and shit. And then like, I didn't know how badly I'd fuck myself until like a, a good week afterwards, couldn't sit down. My fucking ass was killing me. And everyone just kept laughing at me. Like, ha, 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 ha. Mm. And I was like, no, I can't. I honestly, I cannot sit down. Yeah. It's fucked. I think car accidents, you know. If yeah. one of my workers was in a car accident and had any type of bruising, yeah, I would never be like, oh, you have to come to work. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I'm talking about, <laughs> Just you know, self-inflicted shit. Like, I remember Rusty, he... um was flying around in the city on one of those e-scooters and <laughs> accidentally acid dropped a full stair. Yeah. And he got minced and, you know, hobbled out. And I remember thinking like, oh, it's going to be a fucking tough day for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like he he knew how I worked. Like he didn't, yeah. you know, he didn't say anything. Um, it's kind of one of the things you got to set the bar and then you got to keep it up for yourself as well as. That like, was what probably what I've always struggled with so much in my life was um, – and, and one time also working with pneumonia. Yeah. And I remember um, – Respiratory shit is for, no good. I remember for whatever reason it was – I mean, I had a really bad night um, and I, I couldn't sleep in my bed. I slept in a chair and we had this really – really important job that we had to do on the bay in the it, it's all changed now it might have been the yacht squadron is that the fucking the, the, the rock wall yeah yeah and it was tidal yeah um and i was working with um i believe that was at the point where i actually had the most workers ever yeah, nick. i had i had nick i had mitch um and and those young fellas yeah and i remember that thinking you know and vicky was just pleading like the girls were really young back then yeah and we'd had a really bad night i was up all night and you know then the kids were up all night and you know and vicky was just saying like you just you, you can't go and i was mm -hmm. like i like i was like i, I have to go mm -hmm. like i have to go and run this job and i have to do it um anyway luckily that time there wasn't any serious repercussions even though i had pneumonia yeah um they, I was able to get treated. I think that night a house doctor came. Oh, okay. Gave me this yeah. big fucking horse pill. Yeah. And um, don't know what it was. Just, <laughs> just, just um, yeah. So, and it turns out my daughter's got pneumonia right now. Oh, yeah. um, she's at the dock getting an x-ray. No good. So you fucking knew it. No good. Yeah, you knew it. Um, Experience. Yeah. Mm. But the first time I had it, um, I actually had to have two weeks off. Yeah. I remember that too. You were yeah. Bucking. And that was right before the twins were born. Um, so yeah. And, nice. and not, no, not nice. No, I mean like, you know, <laughs> there was right before it's not fucking like they were there. But I ended up with so many side effects. Like I remember, I think I had the runs for like two weeks or oh, something. You, how much did you smoke through it? N none. None? No, I couldn't breathe. All right. Yeah. All right. I thought yeah. you would have fucking at least snuck no, a few oh, in. BJ, I was. Did so... you try? <laughs> no. Wait, that's oh, when like... you. That's when you should have quit. That Absolutely. would have been like a good starting oh, point. I mean, oh, look, I've had I've had a lot of opportunities in my yeah. life, but that one was um, that that was the the lost opportunity. Yeah. Because I yeah I couldn't breathe for 
like days. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the fucking shit we do, Ben. But so I mean, I guess the lesson here is like we do want to promote, you know, being safe and yeah. and all of this. Yeah, of stuff. course. It's- but it, but I still think not only do you have to be mentally tough, but you you gotta be physically tough to just yeah. to to carry on through. And if you're solo <laughs> I mean look, if you're solo, it works in reverse because you don't have anyone to carry the ball. Yeah. Um, but you don't have anyone to, like, you don't have to support yeah, another family. you don't have family. to get up at 6 o'clock to. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, even if you have a family. No, I mean, just, you don't have to support another family. Like, yeah, you know like your capacity you, and, like, it. Yeah, most like of the time if, if I have got, to have a day off, one of the, like, if I'm working with one person, like, they're normally going to have the day off too unless they. Yeah. But, like, um, if you've got the flu. And you get, you know, like we all know what it's like waking up at six o'clock in the morning. Like you're just never going to feel like going out and no. but you might be able to sleep it out till nine ten to have a really good shower, have a really good feed yep. and be able to do some works before, you know, the late afternoon hits, which is when those flus really well, come back. Well, yeah, here. like the real flu, like influenza A fucking cooks me. Like that's just one illness that... Like I, I have like hallucinations and fucking have like nightmares and shit like that. I always dream about the Lord of the Rings. I don't know why. <laughs> it's fucking kooky, eh? Like it legit like makes me um, just like have these weird dreams that go on for ages while and I'm having like these night fucking sweats. Like so, ah! obviously when that happens, you are having like a fever. Yeah, like a mad fever. I tell you what, man. Like you can be fever. I just don't ever remember getting fevers at all until like maybe a few years ago really when um yeah like i don't ever really recall you know like where you where you t- where you're totally burning up oh, and you yeah. just wake up wet well i've only had influenza two or three times in my life i think uh, but I had COVID and COVID was a walk in the park. But one thing, the other thing that fucks me up and. See, COVID fucked me, bro. Yeah. See, I had a three day migraine. It didn't even touch the sides. And but then I had, for me. Long, I had long COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only laugh because Vicky always laughs when I say I had long COVID. <laughs> um, gas, She's like right now. Proper, not gastro, but like, yeah, gastro, like proper gastro. Like the shit that makes you unavailable for days. Like, I, that's the only time so, I've ever gone to hospital. Yeah, remember when I... Yeah. It was only two years ago. I had yeah, cash you, bro. Yeah, you got um, fucked up. And I still was... So I made the 40 acres basically by myself. Rusty came for a bit. <laughs> and drank. I can only imagine I drank some bad... Well, but I remember Rusty had it too. But <laughs> Maybe his tummy was used to eating yeah, shit. Just, yeah, e- Eating actual shit. You probably just had a drink out of a fucking poo-poo valve. Um... But, I mean, it it was bad. Like, I've just never lost so many fluids in my life. Yeah. Like, I just couldn't believe what was coming out of me. Were you just shitting? Yes. Oh, I see. But what was bad about it was I was, like, kind of fainting on the toilet. <laughs> and, like, Vicky and I have a great relationship. <laughs> But, like, I just – I didn't want help. Oh, no. I didn't want help in that situation, um, you know, where – and I remember, like, I was having, like, really, really, really hot flushes on the toilet <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Didn't that, want, that and sounds, didn't want to end up like Elvis. That you know, sounds like yeah, dying on oh, the my sandwich. That sounds like food poisoning styles. Like, got, that's what I got in Thailand. I ruined the whole Christmas. We were supposed to have a Christmas – we were supposed <laughs> to have two Christmas parties – and then what happened was uh, it might have been right before COVID or something, but the – no, it was after COVID. Yeah. Um, the family ended up having a Christmas party somewhere else and they wouldn't let any of my family go because they thought whatever I had was contagious. But <laughs> it was – like no one else got it. No yeah. one else got sick. But fuck me. Yeah, that's I, why I say maybe it was food poisoning because gastro is pretty – like intense, like when one person gets it in a household, normally yeah. more would. So maybe yeah. it was like real bad. I remember the first night Vicky was in bed and that, and then I just, I didn't see her again for three days. She's like, nah, man. Yeah, I catch just, her. Nah. Yeah. I think the same. And I needed to be by myself. 
Same thing happened to me because I <laughs> needed to be by myself. Yeah, because it it's was... fucked. Like it's in, it's embarrassing. Like when I had to go to the time I went to hospital was the worst I've ever had it, and the initial the initial spew was the worst because I was in the bowl like hugging it like full just oh and then you just going it and then I backfired. I looked like I had fucking and who cleaned up that mess? I cleaned it all. Like I just shit all up my back like a baby. Oh, like oh I, my God. <laughs> I sprayed the joint. It was it was fucked. Like here's me on my knees, hugging the bowl. I don't want to picture it anymore. And then I was just like, Ugh! and it just was like someone turned a tap on, uh, and let let the hose go. But see, I didn't eat for like. I mean, it was days. I remember it was yeah, great to see. I had put on a bit of weight with all my like endone and back stuff yeah, and not real weight, but like bloating and stuff. And I remember when I come out the back of this, I was like, this is great. You know, yeah, I didn't like, eat for thin like, and, you know, can jump and move around. And the fuck thing for me was it got to day three and I wasn't getting any better. And I was just like, I drink a little bit of water. I'd spew. It was just back and forth. There was nothing that was stopping it. So I knew I had something bad and I, I actually fucking went in an air. Like I got, no, I didn't go in an ambulance. Oh, I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But I had to go to hospital and I've n- I don't go to hospital ever. Like that's the yeah. second I had a car crash and then that. That's well, it. Well, can I quickly yeah, you, yeah. you can you can yeah, yeah. you can keep going with this, but we've talked about, you know, injuries and sicknesses that we've worked through, but what are say two or three that you just like it's just that's impossible it. to work through? That's that's the one. That, that, the one. that was the one. Um, cause and, I, yeah, I obviously had, I mean, now that I think about it, I've had a couple like yeah. my appendix, I had no option. I mean, it was probably only three days realistically after the op, but I couldn't, you couldn't work cause I couldn't bust the stitches. Yeah. And then, um, pneumonia the first time I, I think I was actually off for two weeks. Yeah. It was okay. a two week turnaround, um, completely bedridden for the first week and then see what the problem was. I lost so much strength and Mm. I wasn't, I don't know what it was, but it was like my head. It's like lights were on, but no one was home. Yeah. Like I've always said that first run of pneumonia took a piece of me away with it. Like I I was seriously (laughs) fucked up. Like I just don't feel like I ever fully was the same after that. But then, yeah, I think the next time, oh, vertigo. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't yeah. diagnosed, but I can only ex- assume I was actually surfing at Stratty and I turned my neck and it was completely locked. Yeah. And um, we actually went from Stratty straight to the hospital. Someone oh, came and picked up the kids from Cleveland and they, they just said, oh, it's a cute neck something or other. I went to bed and when I woke up, the world was spinning. Mm. And it didn't stop for four days. Yeah. Um, and for four days, so it was the girl's first day ever at school and I went. Yep. And I had to leave the classroom, had to go sit in Vicky's car, and I was literally completely fucked um, for four days. So that yep. was um, a real serious time. And we had, that was when I had gotten big contracts. Yeah. And we were supposed to have two people on site and Rusty was there. And when people were like, oh, where's Ben and that? He'd be like, oh, he's, um, I'll get him to come talk to you. Like we were just winging it. Just winging it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was, yeah, another really serious time. And then the only other time was almost the last time that I've ever had to go to work with one mowing was, was the really bad back injury yeah. where, I never went back full time. Mm. That was when I went to hospital and I had catch pro. Yep. Um, and yeah, I had about maybe maybe five days off, but never really went back full time. I I, hired, I had hired someone to take over my role at that point, and yep. then eventually um, restructured the business where I never had to go back. Yeah. Gnarly, yeah. man. Yeah, it's crazy, man. The things you got to do, but that's that's what they are. They're things you got to do. Can like- I can I tell you one more injury that I had? I um was doing a garden cleanup, and I can't remember what trees I was working with, but I remember that none of the branches would snap. <laughs> 
they would just bend. Yeah. And I just couldn't for the life of me snap all these branches and I'm trying to slam them into the trailer. And I had a metal cage trailer and I had my hands sitting, if you're watching on YouTube, I had a hand sitting on top <laughs> of the trailer like this and I'm trying to bend this motherfucker. And I thought... I thought it did. It must have been something underneath it snapping. So I moved my foot and it slingshotted it. It went whoosh, and on my fingers. Ugh. And all I can say was like I did a little mini pass out. <laughs> in the, like I went, everything went dizzy and I immediately was sick. Like I thought I was going to throw up from the pain. Uh, I didn't break my fingers or anything. Mm. Um that's like, where I reach into my pocket and put my nipple clamps on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never forget the feeling that it caused when it happened. Ooh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so. Oh, I don't know man. that I've ever really learned from all these mistakes. No, no, I don't think so either. I think, look, to be honest, in the spur of the moment, you just get, you just do what you can do, especially as a business owner. As an employee, it's different. Like, it's not your business. You don't have an obligation to fucking go above and beyond. Like, mm. it's amazing if you do and, like, you earn a lot more respect and, you know, it, it helps everything grow. Um, and without growth, then, you know, you, your employees aren't going to grow if you're not. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Um, you, you did bring up a really strong point that if you, let's say you're like me and, you, you know, you're, a bit of a hard ass and you expect it from your employees, then you, you better be like expecting it of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You have to lead by example in in a lot of spaces and that's one of them. Um, But yeah, there are some things like fucking we'll get tagged on the face by wasps. Like he couldn't see. And the the worst thing. So I, I was like, Oh, for fuck's sake. Because he did it to himself. Like he tried to fucking hit a wasp's nest the size of a fucking dinner plate with a chopstick. I'm like, there's not enough time to get away. Like, <laughs> if you're going to hit it, hit it with a long stick or yeah, like hit I, it with a bipper. So, yeah, like I – even my comment that I made about Rusty, buddy, cooking the acid drop. Yeah. You know, like I had – you know, obviously made him work and stuff, but it's not like I made him climb a fucking ladder. And no, you no, know, like, like I'll, I, you know, I still expected him. Yeah, a lot I, of. But at the same time, I was, I was sort of like, well, it's not like he's gonna fucking, you know, lift the push mower on and off the roof. Yeah, you know, ten times. Or yeah, something. look, there, yeah, like with with my guys, it a lot good. of he my jobs. Defend himself much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah. He grabbed him, boom, boom. <laughs> um, a lot of. Our jobs are bodies on site. So yeah. if we can get and that's that body came, to site. That's then what we right. came to as well. Yeah. Then, and, and that's yeah. what I would always, look, I would explain that to the boys as well. So like, look, I know you fucked and, you know, but I kind of just need you, your presence Yeah, there. just like, show I, face. I can probably carry the ball from, like, I'm not yeah, happy yeah. about it. Yeah, I'll fucking, yeah. I'll, I'll recharge up and yeah. fucking get into it. And uh, I mean, if it know, was winter, it was like, yeah. And because we have that good team. Yeah, that's it. We got that good team, like, and everybody looks after everyone. Maybe we should then, do an episode on building a team. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just it's harder these days. And when I say that, it's like, you know, we used to just, I mean, I used to employ people with a handshake and say X amount of dollars per day, rah, rah, rah. There wasn't all of this. Um, now and, and I didn't employ everybody like that, but, yeah. you know, there wasn't all of this. You know, like putting money away, like withholding their tax, and yeah. paying their super. It's, you know, like things used to be easier in that way. Yeah. Um, and I would almost even say sometimes more beneficial to the actual employee. Hell yeah. Now, these days, um, you know, with everything being so formal, I mean, it's good. Like, you know, super is, is very important. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, it, like if you had to fire someone, like, like don't come in tomorrow, mate. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Now yeah. it's a fucking, you know, it's a saga. Mm. It's a, it's a three warnings plus. It's like you almost, you almost want them just and to that's what walk in one day like, and say, oh, I'm done. And, and my like, last experience was that younger fella. Yeah, and I had just had enough, and it's like you're not coming in tomorrow. Yeah, and he said, Well, I'm going, to, you know, office of fair trade, and I'm doing this, this, and this, and I was like, you know what, man. I don't really think you're capable of flying through with any of that stuff. So just go and do whatever you got to do. Yeah. And um, called I called his bluff yeah. big time. Yeah. 
Well, although he couldn't even wash his pair a pair of shorts during the week. I had no confidence that he could actually fucking do anything <laughs> to me. Yeah, that's pretty so, fucking, <laughs> That's pretty gross. You know, if oh. you can't put deodorant on before work, you ain't you ain't pulling me up for nothing. <laughs> So, oh yuck! Anyways, dude. Yeah, man. I see Vicky's back packing orders. Yep, I gotta get on um, with my day. I need a piss. Yeah, I'm um, headed out to see Paul Sheehan actually. So give him a pass. Oh, well, I already messaged him and said I better be getting a nice big hug when I get there. I was spoke to him so, in a while, actually. Yeah, I speak to him, you know, once a week sort of thing, just with the event and shit. So I'm not special to him anymore. <laughs> well, now I'm the new hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, look, uh, the industry is slowing down a little bit in Brisbane. Yeah. So BJ and I might be able to get amongst it more regularly. Yeah. Um, it'd, be, it'd actually help out if um, maybe on LMCA might be more appropriate. Um, we probably need some topic suggestions, guys. Yeah. Um, Give it to us. BJ and I just have so much going on these days that um, it, it, it's not really in our back of our minds anymore, hey? No. Uh, one thing, though, um, if I could ask all the, the followers of the Skull Sessions, if you could go over to the Lawn and Land Equip Expo social media pages and follow along um, and tag us in any con- content. That's, that's one thing because – this is new. It's a new business. It's not like we have fucking content coming out every day. Like I'll share whatever I can get at the moment just to have something on that page. Um, there's just one one post, but I st- share about, you know, seven or eight stories a day just of other contractors and bits of equipment, things like that that are coming out. Um, it's all coming together really well. Like I've, I've got some really good contacts and I'm just making new ones every day um, at the footy fields. Uh, yesterday I met a bunch of guys and they do all the um, like turf management for footy fields and soccer fields and all that sort of stuff. Well, just sporting fields around Australia, mm. uh, around Queensland, sorry. Um, Lenny Law, I've been spe- speaking to Lenny. And, uh, big L. Yeah, Big L. Um, he's, he's a great dude. Like, big L, get it out, eh? Show us how big it is. He's so tall. He's so <laughs> handsome. I love that guy. But, um, you know, we've got the support of the Lawn Fanatics, which is huge. Like, it's a, that's a massive group. Um, I've spoken to Jared and Anthony from LMCA, and we've, had, we've got their support too. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what the future holds for uh, Ellie. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's um slow process until two weeks out and then everything's like, holy fuck. Mm. But, uh, yeah. It's- and a massive thanks to our uh, major sponsors, Bad Workwear and um, what's that lawn mob again? Turf Shed? <laughs> you fuck face. Lawn Shed? The Lawn Shed. Yeah. Uh, You're fucked. What? Everyone, <laughs> hey, everyone got the gist of it. All right, fair enough. Um, but I saw some uh, – st- actually, we we – have just cracked a hundred thousand downloads. Yeah, Woo. that was really cool. Hold up, I'm fucking. Fuck yeah! Yeah, fuck yeah! Fuck yeah. Hundred thousand downloads. It did take us a while to get there. It did, um, but you know, it's it's been fun. Like you know, I love it. It just sucks sometimes that we don't have the time to do it. Um, but it is what it is. Like we both have our own businesses, and I'm trying to fucking start a new one and. I know it's supposed to be wrapping up, but the V-Ride XL dropped. That was pretty cool. <sighs> Fuck yeah. I, I'm not as in love with like those, the middles. So like I, it's the 72 Julie that just yeah you know, looks fucking I mean, the, the 50, 52 with the... No, 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 I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. It's pretty like monstrous. It's, it's, it, yeah, no, it's it's awesome, but like... I got to choose that ending the, combo. Yeah. Some people don't like it. It's too much. Too many emissions. <laughs> I know, Fucking I know. Is. What I'm is so... there to not like about more horsepower? I know, There's exactly. no downside. Especially in this fucking, like, the amount of torque coming out of that fucking thing must be crazy. Like, I just can't wait to get on one, to do, be honest. Do people actually understand what the horsepower is for? It's, it's for Australian conditions. Yeah. Like, Americans don't really need, I mean, they they bloody love the horsepower. And I'm sure that oh, they have yeah, markets they're, where they're they do. often over it. But, like... When they're cutting at four point seven five inches on a fucking six inch lawn, it's yeah. not. Uh, it's yeah. You know, but for I'm, a, I'm throwing fucking sticks and stones to yeah. try and break my bones. Like but, it's crazy. Yeah. And for for us, like we Australians, 
like we just typically use mullers as like slashes and tractors. Yeah. And it's not really, you know, they're capable of it. You might have shit off. not really what they're for. No, not but at all. But this is going to really make it so that you, it, it's going to be hard to bog down that machine. I mean, you'll still bog it down because the, the deck still has to exit the material. That's, yeah. But it's, it's, yeah. It's going to be a beast. I just, I just can't wait to put it to work. Um, I, I'm sure there's one coming up to Brisbane to um, – yeah. yeah, there's only a couple here, guys. So if everyone's looking at one, yeah, get amongst go, it. Yeah, go talk to your dealers. 61s and 72s aren't far behind, but, yeah, fucking sick. Yeah, I mean, it looks I, good too. I wouldn't – You have to admit that's the best-looking standard on the market right now. The 72? Just the lineup. The black Because um, yeah. they black out. They black yeah, out so no, much. Yeah, they look great. It. Yep. Yeah, they um, fucking do. No stripes though. No, I'm just trying to think of. Do they look that much different to the V ride? They've blacked it out. They blacked out yeah. a heap, like blacked out wheels and heaps of. Well, I love the blackout stuff. Yeah. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, cool touch. Do you reckon it would finally beat the looks of the Spartan yet? Yeah. God, come on. No, Spartan looks good, but the Spartan stand on looks good. Man. It does, but I think that the like I would, I would probably have called that the best looking stand on. Yeah, no, nah. may even still have the edge for me. Oh, but yeah. the seventy two Julie, that's hot with the ass photo. That's, hot. that's so hot. It's, I mean, that's going to be. Geez, what a what a. I mean. Like, can you imagine that at the 40 acres? Yeah. Like, even the turf tiger, when you take a shot from t- of the turf tiger behind, it, it looks fucking meaty as. But that thing is just so big. It's like the it's width so, of this room. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to I'd love to see it up against – because I've never even seen the ZK. 72. Yeah. I mean, like, we've seen the, Do, the 61, but – Is that the six? Yeah, but that wasn't – That's not what the was Julie. shown. That that's was, not the Julie, hey? The 54 and uh, 52 and the 61, you can both adapt dual wheels to as well. No, but I've never seen one. No, no. Because yeah. most people are getting the 72s because they're doing. No, know, what I'm saying it, is I've never seen the 72s of anything in person. Oh, the no, I've only seen like. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But, I've, but I've, demoed the 60, I've demoed the 61. Yeah. But like when you're demoing a 61 with, you know, the single axles. You know, you're just on a 61. Yeah. And the deck lift apparently is like feather light. I saw Will did a, from Mower Merch, he did a really good video. It's like two finger fucking deck lift. It's And it's what it needs. Yeah. For a machine, like. They need to put that on my 48. <laughs> I think you just need a bigger bicep. See, I don't find no. that, I don't find that bad at all, but. You, you know, don't have one. Each their own. No, but I've used it before. <laughs> it's heavy. It's, it's. I'm not saying it's too heavy that you can't use it, but I'm saying it's probably the heaviest yeah. one on any stander. I'm sure someone would be able to jig up a second spring on it. Yeah, there is a spot. Yeah. Yeah. There's a spot. You can put another spring on the other side. Oh. I can't because I've retrofitted something there. No. Oh. But anyone else can. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it's just, look, it's not out of reason to not get it. I'm just saying <laughs> there's not that many things that you can say bad about a V-Ride. No. That's one of them. Yeah. But there's not that many, you know, it's, there's nothing. Yeah, that's cool. Th- there's nothing like, you know, if you could put it out there as basically the the best standard that you could you could get. Um, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyways, we've had enough, mate. So yep. everyone will uh, possibly catch you next week. Yeah, we'll see what we're doing, eh? Um, but throw some suggestions out for any topics. Yeah, and, for sure. I mean, we'll see if we're capable of <laughs> getting together. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. Until next time, I'm Matt Catch Brosie at TBL. We're out of time. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.